Well, what if range anxiety was a thing of the past? How about an EV with a much smaller battery that never needs to be plugged in? Well, it sounds too good to be true, but for many, that future is already here. Well, greetings, Titans. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Absolutely everybody is used to wireless charging on their phone or their toothbrush, but surely charging an electric vehicle while it's moving is a step too far. In fact, you may be surprised to learn that not only does this technology exist, it's already in operation in Norway and the US and France and Germany. And I predict it will be trialled in the UK within two years. Am I mad? Well, first, let's get rid of all those idiots out there who will scream, no, oh, we can't do that. We can't afford to convert every single mile of road to charging overnight. Duh. That's so obvious. Why are you even saying it? That'd be like saying a hundred years ago that, well, I'm not going to buy one of these newfangled petrol cars until there are proper tarmac roads with street lighting that lead absolutely everywhere I will ever need to drive. Well, thank goodness the early pioneers didn't listen to those idiots. But please listen to me. Click the subscribe button. The reality is there is simply no argument, either practical or financial, to think about converting all the roads. But there might be a really powerful practical and financial argument for some specific sections of a few roads to be able to charge some vehicles. I'm thinking here about buses and lorries. And these are the systems that are already out there working. Well, each bus goes on a set route, never varies. It doesn't think, oh, I'll go down this road, see what's there. Day in, day out, always the same. And the bus makes money. All the time it's on the road, it can earn money. Time spent off the road costs money. So if an electric bus has to spend time charging, it's losing money. And the charging would have had to have been paid for and installed, electricity supply introduced, etc. Well, if instead that same money had been invested in electrifying the road only on the bus route, it now begins to make a bit more sense. It's no longer a cost, it's now an investment. Plus, there are significant savings to be had. The bus now never needs to stop for charging. It's always charging, whether driving or stationary. Additionally, if you're constantly charging, then the battery only needs to be tiny if you actually need one at all. Electric trains don't have batteries. That is a huge saving. Batteries are expensive. Then that also frees up additional space on the bus, meaning more potential passengers. No more big bulky batteries either, so it makes the bus much lighter, making the drivetrain even more efficient. Also, besides not having to buy and install chargers, you also get the space back that used to be your charging station and bays. The first use for under-road charging is likely to be for commercial vehicles. That extends to lorries. Contrary to what most people think, most lorries follow set routes. The idea of them just going here, there and everywhere each day is pure fantasy. Delivery lorries generally take a finished product from point A to point B. That's it. A factory to a depot, a depot to a supermarket. Every day exactly the same route. Factory that makes maybe frozen chips, every day will just deliver them to a depot. And there the individual electric vans might take over to complete what they call the final last mile trip. Those routes now might make sense to electrify. Well, that is where the existing trials are trying to determine. The cost of using fossil fuel based ICE vehicles is well known. It's what we've been doing for years, well, decades. Capital cost of the vehicles, servicing, maintenance, parts, fuel, time off the road. These are all very well known. But these trials will allow the transport managers and directors to compare the electric costs to what they already do. And these guys spend a fortune. A typical lorry, just the cab bit, not the trailer, the cab can cost between 150 and 250 thousand pound. And many fleets have in excess of 100 lorries. And they don't last forever. 
they have a general lifespan of maybe a million miles, meaning around about 10 years, maybe a few more. Well, just the battery on the electric lorry might cost more than that. How much less would the lorry cost without a battery at all? If diesel HGVs get less than 10 miles per gallon and burning diesel to produce movement is well under 50% efficient, then using electric motors at 95% efficient could make a lot of sense. And there's no fuel duty on electricity. Well, that's a calculation they're working through right now. If they can knock just a few pence per mile off the cost uh, of running a diesel lorry, they'll be right there in the queue if these are ever released. The Tesla Semi over in the States and the Volvo EVs in Europe are the best working examples of this. Companies running them already have invested in buying them and invested further in the charging infrastructure to charge the batteries. And the savings they make are calculated to be, ah, oh, they're, they're looking probably maybe, maybe about 20 or 30 cents per mile. Plus they have lower maintenance cost, reduced downtime, lorry in for servicing is losing them money. Now a lorry without the battery will offer significant savings on the purchase price and an equally significant saving on servicing and maintenance. It might have anything up to twice the surface life. Well onboard batteries don't last forever. That needs to be offset against the cost of converting the road to include a charging system that is generally called payback. Well this is where a one-off cost converting the roads, saves enough money to get that initial investment back in a time span that makes sense to do it, even if you have to borrow to do it. Let's give you an example. If it saves enough each year to get the full investment back in just two years, but will go on to run for a total of 10 years, that's a no brainer, you do it. If it saves enough to get a payback in 20 years, but it will only last for 10 years, that's a non-starter. Now, for those who immediately dismiss this as impossible for private EVs, think again. Once all of our motorways were free to use until a company, that was Eliatica, calculated that the revenue from building, maintaining and operating the privately owned 27 mile stretch of the M6 in the Midlands would give a financial return that was actually worth doing. We got our first toll motorway. And the amazing thing is, it's entirely voluntary. You don't have to use it, people choose to. Well, the future for privately owned EVs getting access to wireless in-road charging depends not on the cost of installing it, but purely on the financial argument. If they can make a profit, somebody will do it, and it'll probably be a race to be the first. I forget all those negatives, and will they charge you for charging you? Yeah, um, on the M6 toll section, you can already set up an account and simply drive through without stopping. It detects where you get on and get off. Same in the Mersey Tunnel, Liverpool, and the Dartford Crossing. Well, that's actually the really easy bit, but that already exists. Well, time will tell, but I'm gonna predict that private EV wireless road charging will be fully operational somewhere in the world on a short section of road later this year. I also predict that new EVs will start to be equipped with wireless charging as standard later this year, 2025. And a stretch of public road somewhere, probably a motorway, will be designated for conversion for public users in 2026. It'll then take a further year or so to complete. Oh, these are bold claims indeed. Am I right? Do you disagree? Leave your comments down below. I'm Dave. We want to thank you for watching our long cast. Dave takes it on. And if you like what we do, what we ask of you is to click that like and subscribe to follow along. Thank you for watching. Dave takes it on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't think of anything interesting no, to no. say. <laughs>